tuning in for, for me. I think a lot of people felt that with Van when Vanderpump left, that it sort of took some of the magic away from the mix. And they're trying to find a new blend that works at, you know, you can't beat the original. <laughs> That's what I've always been told by people in Hollywood because medium came out and then there were all these other shows that were sort of the same genre. And I had a, a very famous actress tell me, she said, it's always the original that hits, you know, that's, that's big. The others are just, they fall by the wayside. She wasn't wrong. So maybe if they go back to the original cast, it would be more interesting and stop trying to constantly change it up so they can pay people less. I don't know who any of the young women on that show were. I have no idea. And I don't like Crystal Kong. You don't know. And I have no idea who she is. And I don't know how she'd even be relevant to my life. You know, <laughs> just they're just people. So, um, no, I don't know who she is. There were at least five people at the dinner table. I didn't I didn't know who they were. So, um, again, I thought it was a fail. If you're if you're looking for a pass or a fail grade on the dinner party from hell being rebooted, if you will, fail I thought it was you. a fail. I, I yeah. Nope. And personally, I found these two dinner party episodes so far the absolute highlights of the entire season. Like I found the other episodes way more boring. I, I agree with that. I mean, I agree with that, but that's a very low bar to set. <laughs> and mind you, that probably is, if I really strip it down, if yeah. because of Denise. Like I found the whole, which is sad that I'm really capitalizing on someone's misfortune, but like even right. like, yes, the whole, and Denise is like, don't do this. And Dorit is like, no, darling. Like I, I understand like Denise is like, don't do this. Cause like, I don't, I mean, yes, at that point, Denise, I think you're maybe not self-aware that they already have the footage they need, but right. I think in her mind, she didn't realize that she was so far gone. And she was saying to Dorit, like, don't make it like I have my clothes on upside down because I know what you're doing. That's how I took it. And Dorit's well, like, because if Darling. she hadn't, if she hadn't pointed it out, was anybody really paying attention? There no. was so much going on. I wasn't really honestly paying attention. And I, I didn't really notice until she pointed it out. So she sort of did her dirty. You know, if somebody is a real friend and you see a friend struggling and doing something like that, something where it's not like their skirt tucked into the back of their pantyhose or something where like you have to tell them you've got to point it out so they don't walk out the door like that. It was her coat. It looked a little twisted. It was it, it was a shrug. It wasn't that big of a deal, um, but she pointed it out. So you can see that Dorit is trying to do her job on the show. They're all sort of, you know, pit bulls sent in there to bring back the red meat. And she found a way in for herself there. And the more that you connect with other people on the show, especially for an episode that was so highly promoted, the more screen time you get. And so they're fighting for screen time. And I felt bad for Denise. She was probably saying, you know, without being articulate enough to do it in the moment, if there's any humanity in you, please don't do this right now. You know, I'm not feeling good. I'm not okay. Um, but they're going to point it out every time because that's what they get paid for. That's what they get paid for. I just want to, like, as we wrap up, I just want to know, not even like shade. I really just want to know how Denise feels like, I mean, eventually she's going to do some interview, whether it's a year from now, three months from now, this will come up. I just want to know like how she feels about this. I'm, I'm actually, I'm worried about her dying more than any. Really? I'm worried about more of a Matthew Perry situation or she, I mean, somebody needs to help her. And normally people will watch this show and they'll root for the underdog because we're, you know, we love a good comeback story. You know, people can forgive a lot. Um, and Denise is clearly struggling there. And I will say this in Beverly Hills, if you are considered tainted, you, you can get blackballed very quickly. And by that, I just mean if everybody's abandoned you because you can no longer serve their purpose, you, can, you can't benefit them in any way, you're alone. So, and they'll shut you out because they're not real friends. So 
I feel bad for her. I hope somebody helps her because she's clearly a bit of a, she's in a lot of pain and it's like watching a train wreck and watching her. She didn't look like she was on just alcohol either. She sort of seemed like there was something more going on with her. So, um, because I think all of us that are adults and that have had children, which will drive you to drink, um, have had a few, you know, too many on a, any given night. And with me and my friends, it'll be like a, sorry, I was a little marinated last night, you know, and like all's forgiven because we're all friends. But when you get to the place where, where she's at it, it's like, is there Xanax mixed in? Is there something else? And so I'm sort of worried about her mixing alcohol with drugs because a lot of the people that I bring through are people that were on medication to help them through uh, bipolar, anxiety, depression, anything under that umbrella. And they think because they've drank before and they've taken the medication before that they can handle it. And it ends up killing them because alcohol mixed with that drug will kill you. And they just don't seem to get that message out to people or realize it. So I'm, I'm actually worried about her. It'd be great if somebody could check on her and make sure she's not doing that and help her into some sort of a, a program so that she can get back to where she was. We'd love to see a good comeback story for Denise, talented Denise. And for anybody watching or listening to you that hasn't seen her in movies, she was on the big screen, you know, back in the day. And people yeah. love you when you're a star. And then when you fall, everybody abandons you. And I think that's terrible. So, I mean, if she ever needed anyone to talk to, I would definitely take that call from her. Um, I'm so, I'm sort of tempted to get my friend, Dr. Jen to reach out to her because it just seems like such a cry for help. And why, when they've had Dr. Jen on all these episodes and she's been constantly mentioned as, oh, she's my therapist too, is somebody with decency not saying, let's get Dr. Jen on there. Let's bring Denise back on. Let's, her let's help her heal. I mean, even if they film it, at least they're getting her help, you know? And you're really worried about her dying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I see it too often. Life is so fragile. People play Russian roulette, not realizing they're playing Russian roulette with their life. They mix Xanax and alcohol and that can kill you. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about her. Well, maybe after this comes out, somebody will contact Dr. Jen or Denise will contact you since you will take that call. That would be great. I mean, since Dr. Jen's already helping Sutton. Erica. Yeah, she said Sutton, Sutton and Erica. And Erica. Just bring her on the damn show. All those women need help. For Christ's sake, those women are wounded, wounded, wounded. They need Dr. Jen to sit at the table, but all she would do would teach them wisdom, the right thing to do. And people would think that's boring, but I find her a fascinating person. So I would watch her. <laughs> Me too. Well, thank you for doing this again and watching an episode that you found boring. Thank you for muddling on through. I'm sure these listeners are thrilled that you did. So, you know. Well, happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you have a happy holiday and I will happy see you in the new year, my friend. I will see you in the new year. And you know, I'm coming in January, February or March. One of those, we're going to make it happen. Well, rendezvous. It's, it's a, it's a date. It's going to be fun. 